So yeah, thanks everybody for coming. Uh, definitely really energizing to see how many people we have in our bridge builder family and just how many people are excited to help us change the world one bridge at a time, as we like to say. So um, yeah, we actually, we have people from a lot of different places all around the world. I always like to start out by reading off some of the places that we have people from. So uh, the list that I had last time I checked, we have people from Alberta, Colorado School of Mines, Cornell, Colorado Boulder, Duke, Florida Atlantic, Georgia Tech, Illinois, Iowa, McGill, Notre Dame, Penn State, Rutgers, Southern Indiana, Toronto, UC London, Virginia Tech, Western, Illinois Institute of Technology, New Mexico Tech, Polytechnic Montreal, British Columbia, Virginia, Hofstra, Stevens Institute of Technology, Thornton Tomasetti, Arup, Borough Halfold, Hydro-Quebec, AZ Engineering, Mnet, Jacobs, McNamara Salvia, Wolverine Engineers and Surveyors, and there's probably been more since the last time I looked at the list who have registered from other places. So that's a, that's a huge variety of places. Um, we've got some new schools in there that we haven't had before, so that's exciting as well. Um, and yeah, it's again, it's, it's just super inspiring for us to see how much the Bridge Builder family has grown um, since we first started back in the day, and we're definitely really excited to have everybody together this weekend. So we have a, a great set of presentations on the agenda, um, but I'd like to start out by talking about why we're here in the first place. Uh, and in particular, I want to start with a story that I heard many moons ago that continues to inspire me and that I think relates very well to our work. So we'll start by reading a, a little story. Um, this is actually, I heard this story in high school and then I ended up writing my college admission essays based on the story. So obviously you guys have already written your, your essays, but that's how, that's how much it stuck out to me, how much I liked it. I think it relates to our work. So here's the story. Once upon a time, a woman was walking along the beach. During the night, there had been a mighty storm and all along the high water mark were thousands of starfish washed up with huge waves. It was early, but the sun was already hot in the sky, and the starfish were rapidly drying out and dying. There was no hope of the next high tide reaching them, and their fate was sealed. In the distance, the woman saw an old man, stooped with age, walking as quickly as he could, back and forth between the great mass of starfish and the ocean's edge. Each time he would pick up a single starfish and carry it back to the sea, placing it gently in the surf. On reaching the old man, the woman said, you know that you're wasting your time, old man. There are thousands of starfish here, and they'll all be dead before very long. You should rest. There's no point in wasting your time. Your efforts here will make no difference. The old man stopped briefly, smiled at the young woman, and said, You are right. I will not be able to make a difference to all of them. Still smiling, he looked down at the starfish in his hand and said, But it will make a big difference to this one. A little while later, a man was walking along the beach. He too was shocked by the sheer number of starfish dying on the beach. In the distance, he saw an old man and a young woman walking as quickly as they could back and forth between the great mass of starfish and the ocean's edge. Each time they would pick up a starfish and carry it back to the sea, placing it gently in the surf. On reaching the couple, the man said, you know that you two are wasting your time. There are thousands of starfish here and they will all be dead before very long. There's no point in wasting your time. Your efforts here will make no difference old man and the woman stopped briefly and looked at each other. Old man nodded and the young woman smiled at the man and said, you are right. We will not be able to make a difference to all of them, but it will make a big difference to this one. And then it goes on and on, obviously, and there's more and more people on the beach. And one of the reasons that I love this story so much is that I think that it hits at the core of what we're doing at EIA. Um, as, as, Everybody knows there's a lot of tragic things happening across the globe right now, too many to list. It sometimes feels hard to believe that any one person can make a difference, especially when you're still relatively young and you feel like maybe you don't have the experience or the money or the influence that you need to change the world and make a big difference. Uh, but at EIA, we know that for each bridge we build, the world does change for that community that we build it with. And that the actions of each one of our students and then inspire others to give back in their own ways as well. So we want to provide that inspiration for our students, for all of you, um, and for then you to provide that inspiration to other people. And that's what's going to create this exponentially expanding ripple effect that truly is changing the world for the better. But if you're new to the family, 
um, you're probably wondering how we go about doing that. So let me start with our why. And if any of you have seen um, Simon Sinek's uh, start with the why presentation, his TED talk on that, that's that's the framework we're going to go go through, the, like the backwards way of then the, the why and then the how and then the what. So anyway, let's start with the why. All right. So this is Ethan. And that, that actually is me back when I had hair and what? didn't know how to use the uh, toilet yet anyway. Um, but uh, yeah, that's me. This is Ethan. Ethan wanted to be an engineer when he was young so he could uh, so that he could build bridges and help people live healthier lives. Uh, he was born into Iowa into a family that gave him opportunity to achieve that dream. So he went to school and he studied engineering and he learned how to build bridges. Um, bridges that connect people to the resources they need to live healthy lives. And the picture on the screen right now is uh, the second bridge build that I did in, in Hikaro, Nicaragua, which was one of many awesome projects that I've gotten to work on. Um, so now Ethan has his dream job and all is well in the world, right? Wrong. Because this is Chepe. Chepe wanted to be a doctor so that he could help people live healthier lives. But Chepe was born in an isolated community in Nicaragua where the rainy season made the river impassable, forcing him to miss weeks of school at a time. Eventually, he felt so far behind that he actually had to drop out of school and stop pursuing his dreams. What did he do to deserve having his dreams crushed at such a young age? Nothing. And what did Ethan do to deserve being born with so much more opportunity than Chepe? Nothing. Is that fair? No, I don't, I don't think it's fair. What is fair is that somebody born with as many resources and opportunities as Ethan would do something to change that. So that's what Ethan did. So this is actually the first bridge that, that I worked on, uh, the community that Chepe was, was from. Um, and this is, this is the bridge that's still serving Chepe's community. So now Chepe has a bridge uh, that he helped build with his own hands. Uh, that, that first picture of him was him working on the bridge. And that bridge means that he can cross the river every day, no matter how hard the river is raging below. So he's back in school, back on track to become the doctor that he still dreams of becoming, and all is well with the world, right? Wrong. Because Mbile wants to be a lawyer who has helped marginalized people, uh, who helps marginalized people fight for their rights. But she was born in a remote community in Eswatini, where a raging river isolates her from the opportunity to get to school and pursue that dream. And Flora in Bolivia can't become a teacher. And millions of other children around the world can't get to school to become what they dream to be. And millions more can't reach healthcare that they need to stay healthy. And millions more can't reach the markets to provide food for their families. And on and on it goes. So there's, there's actually over a billion people in the world who don't have access to the resources and the opportunities that they need to thrive. And instead, they're just stuck trying to trying to survive. And what did they do to deserve that? Nothing. Just luck of the draw, right? So a billion people, that's, that's a huge number. And the number is only growing as the world population continues to expand. Something needs to change for these people to get access to what they need. Uh, and it needs to change now. We need more people who care about this problem. Uh, but not just any people, right? People who have resources and opportunities and the ability to solve problems. We need engineers and we need them to take action. But many engineers are content spending their time and energy crunching numbers in their cubicles and making money for their companies and turning a blind eye on those in need. So where are we gonna find that many engineers who would rather use some of their opportunity to serve those without opportunity? What about all of you? Are you willing to stand up to all the injustice in the world and fight for everybody to have equal access, opportunity, no matter where they live, no matter where they're born? I hope so, because that's, that's why we're here, right? Because we're engineers, we have resources, we have opportunity, we have skills, make a difference, and we don't want to just, we don't want to wait to put that into action. Um, we're here because we want to become engineers in action, right? But who are we kidding? We're just a bunch of college kids who haven't even finished their degrees yet, right? How are, how are we going to make a dent in one billion people who currently lack safe access to essential resources and opportunities? How are we going to make a dent in those thousands of starfish on the beach, right? Well, we're going to do it by becoming bridge builders. So now have our why. 
Why do we exist? Why does the bridge program at Engineers in Action exist? To build a world where everyone has equal access to opportunity. Now let's dive into how we're gonna do that by building bridges. Bridge building has a nice ring to it, right? We like to call ourselves bridge builders. Um, sounds cool, it is cool. But again, how are a bunch of relatively untrained college students gonna become bridge builders? So um, for those of you that have your video on, or if you don't, go ahead and turn it on. Raise your hand if you've never built a pedestrian bridge before. All right, now keep your hand in the air if you think you could go out and just build a bridge right now. Okay, yeah, not seeing very many hands left in the air. That's, that's good. One of the most important skills in life is to know when you don't know what you're doing. Um, and you're, you're absolutely right if you have your hand down right now, um, unless you've built a bunch of these in the past. Uh, probably, probably not many of you could go out and build a bridge or even design and prepare for one for that matter, because these are extremely complex structures that we're talking about. You have to know advanced design principles for, for masonry and concrete, steel, timber, soil, wire rope, um, and probably a bunch more than I'm not thinking about right now. Uh, and that's, that's to say nothing of the additional challenges that come from working in a low income country where the construction has to be done by hand. Um, the materials are, are rarely on time. Your workforce comes from a completely different culture um, and often doesn't even speak the same language um, and, and on and on. It's, it's actually pretty difficult to pull off one of these projects. And that's why we have a ridiculously robust preparation process that will allow anybody who's willing to work their butts off to take part, even if you don't have that prior training and experience. That's one of the really cool things about our program is that anybody can participate, anybody can help. So to become a bridge builder, um, you'll spend your entire academic year learning and preparing. Site analysis, bridge design, material takeoffs, um, cost estimates, construction schedules, mitigation plans, health and safety plans, cross-cultural competency training, uh, all of that is covered in our training materials. The list goes on. And our online training platform, which we call Bridge EDU, um, or BDU for short, because we can't be bothered to even say that many syllables. Um, but that's our online training platform. It's going to walk you through all of this preparatory material. And then we have a bunch of alumni to help guide you as well. And our staff are going to grill you on the review calls to ensure that you're ready uh, for everything that you're going to be put up against. And then uh, the bridge that you prepare over the academic year will actually get built and change the lives of a community forever, connecting them to the essential resources that they need um, to survive and the opportunities they need to thrive. And if COVID behaves, fingers crossed, then hopefully you'll even get to spend your summer living and working alongside that community on that bridge. And the best part is that it means that you don't have to wait until you graduate and get a ton of experience and enough money and vacation and all that to make a difference. With us, with EIA, you can make a big difference right now. But maybe you're wondering to yourself, you know, why, why bridges? It seems like there's all kinds of different projects that we could do. Um, why bridges specifically? Uh, well, because there's more than 1 billion people around the world who live without year-round access to healthcare and markets and schools and more. And pedestrian bridges are the most economical way to solve that isolation. After a pedestrian bridge is built, studies have shown that communities experience a 12% increase in children enrolled in school, an 18% increase in healthcare treatment, a 30% increase in labor market income, 59% increase in women in the labor market, and a 75% increase in farm profits. Those numbers are so staggering that it, it actually takes a couple minutes to sink in. Um, I think it's easy to just read statistics and be like, okay, yeah, sure, statistics, they say whatever you want them to say. Um, but I think it's worth thinking about it a little bit longer and, and really like going through an example of this kind of impact. Uh, so let's, let's look at the financial returns, for example. So imagine for a second that you make $50,000 a year just to make easy math. I, you know, I, it's hard for me to imagine making that as, as well. So I, I understand. Um, but imagine you make 50,000. Now uh, a bridge is built across the river in your community and you now make 30% more 
which would be equivalent to $15,000. That's a huge increase and that could make a huge difference in your life. I mean, can you imagine what you would do with just an extra $15,000 that you didn't used to have? All right, now imagine that you're a farmer in that community making that same 50,000. Then a bridge is built in your community uh, across that river that you used to not be able to cross. And now you make 75% more, which would be equivalent to $37,500. That's, I mean, that's pretty insane, right? An extra $37,500. Uh, but that's how much impact a bridge has. Um, and it, like, I like putting numbers to it like that because otherwise it's just, you know, it's just a percentage. But when you think about having 37500 extra dollars, um, there's, a, there's a lot that could be done with that. Uh, and for the most part, you know, the, the communities that we're working with, they're, they're, not, they're not making $50,000 a year. Um, a lot of the communities where we're working, um, the people will actually be below the poverty line, like barely bringing in enough to, to get by. Uh, but you can start to imagine uh, how much a 30 or 75% increase in income could transform the lives of the communities that we're working with uh, from going from surviving to thriving with, with increases like that. But the point is that that level of impact is unparalleled in the realm of development projects at the community level, like these bridges are. You just, you don't see that kind of return on investment for other types of projects. And that's why we build bridges and why we have that intensely thorough process to prepare you for how to build them correctly. So we now have our why, and we also have our how. So why do we exist? Build a world where everyone has equal access to opportunity. How will we do it? By building bridges alongside underserved communities. But what will we accomplish by doing this? Well, in the short term, as we've discussed, uh, we'll accomplish a lot of life-changing pedestrian bridges all over the world. Uh, as you can see in this graphic, all the, the pins there are the different bridges that we've built over the years since 2006. We've worked with hundreds of students, probably approaching over a thousand now, I might be over a thousand, haven't counted recently, our alumni. But yeah, like about a thousand students from more than 35 universities across the globe. And we've designed and built 86 footbridges alongside isolated communities in 11 different countries, which are now effectively connecting nearly 150,000 previously isolated people to essential resources. The lasting impact of the bridge program, the EIA bridge program, it's seen not just in, in that year-round access that communities will now have for generations to come with these bridges, but also in the fact that over 100 of our alumni every year remain actively engaged as volunteers, helping us continue to empower future students and the future communities that we work with. There's over 100 every year, uh, and a bunch of them are here today. Hey, ambassadors. Hey, Bridge Corps. Thanks for coming. Uh, and that's, that's huge. That means that we're not just building bridges. I mean, if we were just building bridges, that would be good enough, right? But we're not just building bridges. We're building an army of lifetime global change makers. People who get hooked on humanitarian work like this and then continue to support it for the rest of their lives. And each year that, that army grows bigger and with it, so does our collective impact. And that fact is so important because it means that our collective impact is gonna ripple even beyond the bridges that we're building. The nonprofit sector has been fighting for ages for everybody to have access to the essential resources that they need, but it hasn't been enough. As you know, there's, there's still gobs and gobs of nonprofits out there working on that. It hasn't been enough yet. And to make a dent in the problems that we have in our world, we need more people and more resources. Uh, and, and therein lies the bonus beauty of engineers in action. We're building that exponentially expanding network of people who will continue to use the time and resources that they have, um, not just to bolster engineers in action, our organization, but actually bolster the entire nonprofit sector. You know, we have tons of alumni who come back and help us out. We have tons of alumni who are also helping out a bunch of other nonprofits or, or organizations who are doing good work, um, you know, whether it's with their time or their money or their skills or, or what have you. So, you know, and you, and you can see, you know, we start with this, this small group of people and each year we have more people coming in and the people that have graduated are also influencing a bunch of people. And that's where we get that exponentially expanding effect. You can start to imagine like the huge amount of change that we can accomplish together. But maybe you're thinking, you know, a lifetime global change maker, uh, that feels 
kind of crazy for me to commit to an entire lifetime of global change making. Seems pretty intense. Um, but take it from me, take it from us. Like once you've seen the difference that you can make out in the world, it's going to feel crazy not to stay a part of something like this in one way or another. And that's exactly what we need. That's why we're here, right? So we finally arrived at having all three of these. We now have our why, our how, and our what. So why do we exist? Build a world where everyone has equal access opportunity. So Chepe and Tombile and Flora and everybody else in the world has access to opportunity just like Ethan did. How are we going to do it? By building bridges alongside underserved communities. which will end up being simultaneously one of the hardest and most rewarding things that you guys do in your lives. It was, it was for me. And I know we, we hear that from our alumni as well. And what are we going to accomplish by doing it? Not only an ever expanding number of bridges, transforming the lives of the communities they serve, but an exponentially expanding network of global change makers whose impact is gonna stretch far beyond just the bridges. So let's save some starfish, build some bridges, connect some communities, and change the world one bridge at a time. Welcome to the Bridge Builder family, y'all.